Ducks Valley Voice. Hi, Quimby. Hi, Jaime. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see you again. We're back again. Happy yes. New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. This yeah. is exciting. Um, this is our second uh, show. Second episode. Yeah. They renewed us at least for one episode. One more. Mm-hmm. And then we'll see what happens after that. Yes. Um, did you have uh, a fabulous holiday season? Sure. <laughs> I'm glad it's over, Jaime. Why do you say that? I don't know. Why do you say that? Um, it was it was nice. It was nice to take a little bit of a break from work and everything. How about you? Yeah. We went on a massive um, road trip. Yes, I heard. We drove through Indiana to see some family. We spent a couple nights in Memphis. And then we went to Austin, Texas. That's awesome. So lots of cool uh, music. We you know enjoyed, uh, obviously, Memphis. Mm -hmm. um, very instrumental, no pun intended. In the history of rock and roll, we went to Sun Studio. That's really cool. And... Uh, we skipped Elvis this time because uh, we've been to Graceland several times, but uh, we had never been to Sun Studio, so we went there. And and then uh, Austin, you know, is the live yeah. music capital of the world. So. I'm sure you had some delicious food there. Oh, my gosh. I, I can eat, only imagine. Can I tell you that I am about six pounds up right now? Just from eating in Austin. And Memphis, because both yeah. um, Memphis and Austin, they pride themselves on their... Um, Barbecue, barbecue. Mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, barbecue, not necessarily the lightest. <laughs> it shouldn't be. <laughs> it shouldn't be. If you're going to go, you better go. 100%. Oh, we went. 100%. We went big. We so, went big. Very but, cool. Um, yeah. Thanks for asking. Yes. So. Um, yeah. So we are here to record episode two of the Siren Sound Cafe. Um, before we get into that, did you get any feedback about the first episode? I did. It sounds like everybody was really happy with what they heard and um, inspired. And um, I got a lot of positive feedback from it and excited to kind of keep that rolling and right. see where this goes. We better not screw this up then. No. There's a <laughs> lot of pressure. For sure. Um, so. All right. So we we should introduce your guest. Yes. Who are we going to talk to? We are going to talk to Jenny Jagajit, quote, quote, Bergold, um, who is a yoga instructor and expert sound healer um, from the Fox Valley area. She teaches pretty much all over, I would say, mm -hmm. kind of this region as far as um, spreading her practice of yoga and sound healing. And so we're going to talk about how kind of what sound healing is. Because that's kind of a broad uh, description of what she does, and then how it affects us as far as mm -hmm. healing is concerned. And you have a personal connection with her. Right? We do. Yes, yeah. um, I met her a couple year years ago on my own journey. Um, I went to one of her sound healings, and then we became friends. And then I followed her onto a yoga retreat, and she kind of she really inspired me to kind of pursue pursued this kind of holistic uh, adventure in healing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. So, um, yeah. And we've got a couple other characters to introduce as well. Absolutely. Um, our music that you heard at the top of the show here. Yes. And uh, we'll hear again later. Um, yes. Composed by a friend of yours. Yes. Old friends. So I've known Ryan Carney for, oh my goodness, um, over 15 years, I would say. And um he is. He studied at uh, University of Indiana, um, and he is a musician. He's a multi, I guess, multiplayer. He plays a bunch of different instruments, but um, I thought he would be perfect um, to orchestrate the theme song to Sirens on Cafe. And <clears throat> I reached out to him, and he said yes. And so um, he is the he's the guy who put this all together for us, and. Um, very grateful to him. Very, very mm -hmm. talented. And we hope to have him on many, many more shows to come. And actually, he's going to be a guest. So Okay, wonderful. Yeah, we'll be hosting We'll him get soon. his full story when he comes in. Yes. And one more person before we uh, talk to Jenny to introduce. we uh, A friend of mine um, that I've uh, 
gotten to know here over the past year, a photographer by the name of Chuck Benorth. He uh, offered very graciously to come and take some photos of our recording session. Yes. So um, if you hear some uh, some clicks of a very uh, expensive camera uh, in the background while we talk, um, that's what that is. <laughs> yes. So, so um, excellent. You. Anything else before we jump Just in? Just thanks to everybody who's tuning in and who's listening. And we love to hear feedback always. And you can mm. find us, obviously, on Facebook and Instagram and all those social media outlets. So thanks everybody again for tuning in. All right. Let's talk to Jenny. Yes. Welcome to the Siren Sound Cafe. I'm your host, Quen B. Schuyler, and today we are hosting Jenny Jagajit Burgold, and I'm going to actually let her introduce herself. Jenny, who are you? What is your profession? I am a yoga teacher, but I used to work in television for years before teaching yoga. I am a mother to a nine-year-old son, Michael, and I live in Elburn. Great. Awesome. And can you tell me, we all want to know, so what does the name Jagajit mean? Okay. Is that your maiden name? No. <laughs> okay. Got it. When I started taking kundalini yoga um, on 3HO, which is Happy Healthy Holy, the kundalini's website, it said on the front, you could receive a spiritual name. And I was like, well, what does that mean? And so I clicked on it and you can then put your birth date and your information and then they send you back a spiritual name. So at the time I did it for myself and my son. This was probably seven, eight years ago. And I didn't think anything of it. It was like, oh, Jagajit, how fun. It kind of goes with my personality and who I am. And, and so I kind of put it aside until I went to take Kundalini teacher training and my teacher was like, you have to be Jagajit. Like, there's no Jenny, there's Jagajit. So at that point, everybody started calling me Jagajit until he said, did you ever read all your description as to what your spiritual name says? And so I was like, geez, no, I have no idea now where I put it. You know, it's probably in all my stuff. And so um, my good friend Bikram was in class with us, and he's from India, and he said, it means light of the world. Hmm. And so I was like, well, now I got to be Jagajit all the time. So in the Kundalini realm, I am Jagajit. In the other yoga realm, especially with my family, I'm Jenny, but I'll, I'll, I'll answer to both. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that name is extremely fitting just from knowing you. I don't know how long it's been now, maybe two years, two and a half years that we've known each other. And that name is super, super fitting. So, um, well, I guess what we all want to know, and probably some of our listeners already know, I'm very interested in your backstory. So um, obviously our session today, we're going to be talking about your craft, which is yoga and sound healing. But how did you come to it? Like, how did this begin for you? Um, it's it's really funny. My mother has kept this picture. I used to go to Montessori school near Chicago Heights when I was, you know, four or five years old. And there's a picture of me, and I posted on Facebook before, in tree pose, doing lion's breath with this Montessori school. And when I first started taking yoga, my mother's like, well, you've kind of been doing it your whole life. Here you are in the local paper with your best friend at the time doing yoga. Um, I used, my father uh, worked in advertising for McDonald's for years, um, over 35 years. And so I grew up in the television business. Um, going on shoots, you know, going to the corporate offices, writing scripts, helping him pick casting for commercials. And um, so from a very early age, I knew I want to be in TV. I don't know if I want to be in front of the camera, but I want to produce. This is like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And so that's I went to college at Ball State University. I was actually, you know, my dad said, do as much as you possibly can before you're 30. 
he was a huge influence in my life as to how motivated I am even to this day. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it was, he said, you got to get out there. You got to start knowing people. And so I was working at WTTW channel 11, even before I graduated high school. Oh wow! And so I kept going back from ball state to work at WTTW and I worked in documentaries and all these different shows and had the best time. Like I can't even, I was very lucky growing up in the TV business. And so then I went, I moved to Boston to work in PBS and that's where I did everything. Like I worked on movies, I worked on advertising, I did everything I possibly could before I turned 30. And then Channel 11 uh, offered me a job back here. So I started producing television back at WTTW. And at the time, you know, TV, it's an eight, it's sometimes you're there all day, you're editing. I mean, you know, it's you're working with technology. Sometimes I'd be there for like three days straight producing these shows, going out on shoots, and it became super stressful. Um, so I was probably, oh gosh, like 28 at the time. And I kept saying, you know, my outside world, I'm super successful. I have a great family. Like my life is really good. But why do I feel like this inside? Like, why do I feel so anxious? Why do I feel so, um, you know, I just felt like I wasn't present, that I had a lot of then physical difficulties because of the anxiety and the panic. And I went to my family doctor it was probably yeah, like 18, 19 years ago now. And I said, I don't know what to do. You know, she did all the tests. She's like, physically, you're fine. It all has to do with what's going on inside of you. And um, so to this day, I still have the prescription pad or, you know, the piece of paper from the prescription pad where she wrote down yoga three times a week and meditation every day. And I was like, OK, usually doctors like give you. <laughs> prescription you know it's like <laughs> you want okay to wait I went up. to the doctor I was like expecting something like to go to Walgreens next or whatever and and so I was like what do I do with this and at the time I was living in Batavia commuting to the city back and forth every day working at channel 11 and I was like where do I start like how do I start this like I've never done you know with the exception of being six years old in Montessori school or however old I was it was like I really I, I don't know where to start and what to do. So my first class was at the Eastside Community Center in Batavia with Donna Berg. And, you know, if you've ever been there, it's in the old, I think it's the old Holy Cross Church. I'm not too sure. But you're in this magical place of the divine with stained glass windows. And here she walks in and she teaches this whole class. And I was like, what did I get myself into? Like, mm -hmm. seriously, I got to go feed the cat. I got to edit this. I got to do it. Like, my mind was like, Phew. it wasn't. Really not present with, with the ex I'm like, and I kept, you know, I'm not very, I'm spiritual. I didn't grow up with the religion. So I was like, okay, God or divine or whoever I'm talking to, like, just get me through this next hour. Like I got a lot to do. Um, but by the end of it, she put me in relaxation and I was like, this is it. Like, this mm -hmm. is the answer. This is exactly what I'm looking for. You know, I am, my mind's elsewhere. I'm a very anxious person and this is what's going to help me. And so I continue to take classes with her at the Batavia Park District. That's how I found Delnor. That was probably like eight. So don't tell. It was probably like 18 years ago with Donna Burke. She's still teaching. Um, and her and, you know, Al at Delnor and Noreen. I mean, all these people like really set me straight and completely changed my life. Um, you know, there were times and that could be like a whole nother podcast or where I did go on medication um, and then the birth of my son. That's like a whole nother story. If, I don't know if we're, we'll go to that. But, um, you know, it just, it saved me. So when I say yoga saved me, I mean, there were times where I was suicidal. I had these thoughts like, is it really, should I be here? You know, and it was, it was scary. It was like, why am I feeling this way? Why do I have this anxiety? And these teachers, my first teachers, really saved my life. So when people say to me, oh, no, yoga didn't save you, I was like, yeah, yeah, it did. The physical practice, the meditations, the chanting, the supportive teachers who even listened to me, you know, when I would message them or email them, that took the time to help me beyond the yoga studio. Um, you know, and I, I remember days at Prana Yoga Center that's still there in Geneva. And um, I mean, just these teachers that really focused on their students and took that time because they knew 
that it wasn't just poses. It was a life-changing thing for people to do, so, medically, physically, spiritually. So my question is, so you moved out of... so. Corporate world was driving you crazy. <laughs> well, uh, well, it was just like it's too much. So like, much too pressure. Much. Yeah, yeah. You start taking these yoga classes, and obviously, somehow, you become a yoga instructor, right? Yeah. You decide to go to school, and well, that's all lead up to that. So then, from Channel Eleven, I went to BATV in Batavia and, and taught there. Well, actually, worked there for seven years, but I also taught high school. So that was also, I mean, life. That was life changing too. I mean, to go from you know, PBS to community access television to teaching high school students and being a mentor for them. Um, at that point, I was married uh, and I got pregnant. And I was like, it's really weird being pregnant in the high school. Like that was, <laughs> it was like, they're all like, well, you're married. You know, I'm like, I know, but it's just really weird. But um, uh, and at that time, then I had Michael. And I mean, you know, that's how we met was I was teaching the yoga class and I started talking about my postpartum depression. Um, and I just the year after I had Michael, I did not recognize myself whatsoever. Like I really went into a complete uh, downward spiral. Uh, the whole time I was pregnant with Michael, it was um, – I had a high risk pregnancy. And so I couldn't really practice besides meditation. And so I think that affected me that, um, you know, I couldn't be in the yoga practice or I couldn't be with other people uh, practicing the yoga. And um, so after I gave birth to him, I really I looked at him at three months old and I was like, I am not going back to television. Like, I'm not. It's too it was too stressful, too many hours. Like at that point, I felt like I was getting too old, even though I was only 33 at the time. And I I went back to um, because at that point, then I was living in Chicago um, and commuting to Batavia. So it was like complete opposite okay. of what I was doing before. And I went to a yoga studio, Heaven Meets Earth in Evanston back from right after I gave birth. And the teacher there said, have you ever thought about becoming a yoga teacher? And I was like, well, all the time, I just never had time to do it because I was in this television world. And um, she said, oh, good, because classes start Monday. And Monday was my birthday. So I took it as a sign that, OK, I need to sign up for this. And my husband at the time, he's like, let's do it. Just, you know, quit your job and let's get you into the yoga teacher teacher training program. And Michael was a year old when I graduated, and it was one of the best things I could have ever done for myself. Yeah. Com probably completely transformed your mm -hmm. vision of what your life was going to be. Oh, from yeah. From working in oh, this totally. mm -hmm. corporate world to now the holistic world I and <laughs> actually having a trauma yeah. to kind of shift your focus. I think that's really interesting. I think as I'm talking with and meeting more people that are – really giving to the community it's like we've all had some some kind of I don't want to call it a failure but some kind of um stopgap where yeah. mm -hmm. you look and you review your life and you're like these things might actually help me to live a better life if I continue on the path I'm on I don't know mm -hmm. I don't know what that's going to look like so I'm going to go with what makes me feel good and then all of a sudden it turns into a career completely different and so yeah. Um, I remember, um, you know, talking about how you and I connected and touching on that a little bit. Yes. So I after the birth of my daughter, I had a stroke and um, after that, subsequently suffered through postpartum anxiety, depression, PTSD, and was pretty much making healing a full time job for myself as mm -hmm. well that first year of, of my daughter's life. And uh, somebody had suggested uh, yoga, and so I had st started doing that. And then I think one of the, I think it might have been Noreen, um, suggested sound healing. And so I had a membership at the gym that you that you work at, and I, I didn't I didn't know you at the time. And so I remember I was thinking, okay, well I'll try anything at this point to help me with this anxiety and these feelings that I'm having. Um, and so I walked in and, and there you were, uh, I had no idea what to, I didn't know what a sound healing was. Yeah. Um, and dressed in white in the front of the room with these beautiful instruments around you and all of these people, um, 
laying on the floor on mats and whatsoever. Probably already sleeping before yeah. it even starts. <laughs> and I, I felt this sense of community before it even started. Mm-hmm. Like there was this grace in that room. Mm-hmm. And I was, you know, I, I walked on pins and needles for the first year, I would say, after my daughter was born. And something kind of started to settle when I walked in that room. And then you started to talk about uh, what to expect in this sound healing. So um, I really, we'd have to do two interviews on you because I'd love to talk about <laughs> your yoga knowledge. Mm-hmm. But to lead into the sound healing, um, let's talk about that. So I know from my own experience what that felt like, but can you just explain to people that maybe have never witnessed a sound healing before, what what is sound healing? I did not know about any of it until I was in teacher training at Heaven Meets Earth and a gong master came as part of our training and I can't remember who it was, but he started to play and I was like, the demons are coming to get me. I need to get out of this room. And I started to walk, I started to get up and leave and he was like, stay and fight your demons. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this guy must know something. Um, so that was my first. It kind of threw you off kilter. Yeah, when you first I was heard. like, I, what is the gong? Why is he playing this? I don't like it. Like mm-hmm. this is, it's just bringing back Bad weird memories. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we had a couple more after that. And I will admit to every time I wanted to leave, mm-hmm. I was like, there, there's nothing to the, what is this? Like, I, I feel like I'm being tortured. Well, I wasn't, but um and then it was, um, so I had my Hatha training, and then a couple years later, I received my Kundalini training. Um, and it was Shiva Singh and Shabakar at Spirit Rising who introduces us to the gong as part of training. I mean, we learn how to play the gong as part of teacher training because the gong has been used in Kundalini yoga for like thousands of years, and, and it's part of a, a meditation in itself for the parasympathetic nervous system. So we learn how to play the gong, and I think me being, I think more, in, I'm a Capricorn, I like to be in control. So I was like, okay, me with the mallet in control of this instrument, I was like, okay, now I got this. Now mm-hmm. I'm starting to understand this. And so we did. We learned all about the gong itself. At that point, I didn't know anything about the bowls or any other instruments. It was just with the gong and what it does for the brain and brain waves and parasympathetic, sympathetic nervous systems and, you know, how it heals on a cellular level. And so I was like, wow, this is totally amazing. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to buy myself a gong. Well, of course, you know, you go to me, it was Andy's music in the city at the time. And he kept bringing up like 75 gongs for me to play. I'm like, what is there a magical gong room in the basement that you just keep bringing these instruments up? (laughs) And so um, my son was three at the time and he picked my gong because it has a rainbow. You can see a rainbow around the gong and it's Mm. it's tuned to the planet Uranus. But at that point, I was like, I'm just going to get a gong that I resonate with. It, I don't know really what it does, but I'm just, I'm just going to play all these gongs and, and, and pick this gong. Uh, which in turn, I found out it's for the sacral chakra, which is your second chakra, which works with reproductive organs, passion, creativity, sexuality. And at the time, I was having ovarian cysts. And so it was like, oh, well, maybe I'm picking this gong to help me personally with what was going on hmm. at the time. Um, and since then I haven't had any problems with that. So I was like, okay, there's a theory behind this. There's a science behind this. And it was that day at Andy's music that I also bought a harmonium, which is kind of like an accordion. Mm -hmm. You play it to chant and yoga. And I also bought my first, um, Tibetan bowl. I just went for a gong and I was like, Ooh, that's cool. Ooh, that's also cool. So this, I, I have a bowl sitting in front of me, the one that you heard at the beginning, um, that's the first bowl I ever bought was at Andy's Music. And I had no idea. I was like, it sounds great. I love it. It's got this like guttural sound to it. It sounds great with the gong. I'm just going to buy it. So I started just playing the gong as part of my kundalini classes because you play the gong during relaxation. And then I met uh, David Diamond, who plays the singing crystal bowls. And he's the one who got me my full set of of singing crystal bowls. He introduced me to the crystal bowls. And so he taught me how to play those and talked about the Hertz levels and, you know, what it's doing. I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to stop you right there. So let's talk about all these instruments. And 
quickly kind of go down the list of what they do. So the gong, um, if you could give listeners a picture actually of what it is. I mean, most people know what a gong looks like. And then the gong show. And then <laughs> what a gong does for the brain and the body. Um, so we'll start with gong and then we'll move to kind okay. of the other instruments. So you asked what what would people expect if they came to a sound healing. Yes. So when I go up in front of the class, I have seven crystal bowls, the singing crystal bowls. I have seven Tibetan bowls that are made out of brass. I have the gong, um, which is I travel with my gong, so it's not a, it's not a huge gong. I think it's like twenty four inches or something. Um, and then I also have shamanic healing sticks and Native American flutes and and chimes and and other instruments people have given to me over the years um the everything works on a cellular level so everything i play helps to heal the physical body in some way so whenever somebody lies down and when you came i said if there's a part of the body that needs extra healing and that could even mean your nervous system your mental status you know your soul might be you might be feeling like your soul's lacking whatever you need to heal send your attention there because the vibrations, the hurts, the the actual vibrations from the bowls mm -hmm. goes directly to the place in your body that needs it most. So mm. it is what I'm playing is for everybody, but it goes to that individual person for what they need. Um, so I'll say all the instruments work with balancing the central nervous system, balancing right brain, left brain, helping with pain management, helping to release anxiety, depression, you know, releasing the symptoms of depression. So each one of the instruments really does the same thing. And for, is it, it's all vibrational? Is it the it's vibration? It's all vibrational. That, so that's just a, almost like an ultrasound or something, yes. something like that. Mm -hmm. Like there's waves being sent into the body. Yes. And, and it triggers what you need most. It so, goes to what you need most. It could be anything. It could be anything. And so that's why I started the sound healing at Del Nor at, at, at the wellness center um, associated with the hospital because they're a medical facility. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so they were like, what is this doing? I go, I can work with patients. I can work with people who are going through chemotherapy or that they do have some sort of mental illness. I can work with everybody. Like, mm -hmm. Whoever wants to come into class, it is going to help them. Yeah. No matter what they have, no matter even if there's nothing going on, it calms it. They say that the mind really has has no chance against the gong. Like once the gong starts to play, mm -hmm. you're just like, whoa, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah, and that's what I say to people at the end of a sound healing. Like take your time coming back to reality. You know, I have had, there was this one friend of mine who she's like, I just got pulled over by the police. And I was like, why? And she goes, because I was driving too slow. <laughs> so I always tell people like, take that time coming back to reality. You know, you really are in this kind of ethereal okay. state, you know. So, so I, I'm going to just talk about my first experience a little mm -hmm. bit. And then I'm, I have a question for you. So my first experience, I find it very interesting that you said, too, that the first time you heard the gong, you were freaked out. Oh, yeah. So coming out of a postpartum PTSD anxiety situation, um, I remember laying down and I started to hear the instruments and I, too, mm -hmm. got scared. Yeah. I thought, this is a little unsettling. It's a little bit loud. It's like, I don't know what's happening. Nobody's telling me what to do. I'm just hearing all these weird things. We And you can almost feel the vibration mm -hmm. a little bit yeah. in your body. And what's quite interesting about it, too, is I've had this happen to me uh, actually quite recently. I did a, a drumming uh, oh, yeah, journey. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Mm -hmm. And it is fun, but not fun, yeah. right? Yeah. So the first 15 minutes of that drumming journey, and this is now two and a half years out of my trauma, um, I got scared again, and mm -hmm. I wanted to get up and leave. Yeah. And it's interesting that... I don't know what happens there where it brings up all of these fears mm -hmm. at first. So, I, I mean, we've done these sound healings together and dinners together, and I've gotten feedback from people that are like, I got a little nervous. Yeah. I got yeah. So it's almost like a normal thing. And so why at first do all of those things kind of start to bubble and surface? Mm -hmm. And then um, and then we'll and then I'll stop you and we'll talk about what happens after that. Okay. It works on a subconscious level. So... And I, 
I really wrestle with, do I tell people that it could happen? Do I, you know, when I'm about to do a sound healing after this and it's like, do I say to them things could come up for them? Do, you know, how do I mm-hmm. present myself? Um, but it goes deep. Like those vibrations go deep. So say I, something happened to me 20 years ago and I thought I was completely done with it and like haven't thought about it and completely fine. Um but all that starts to bubble up again. So trauma gets trapped in the body. From now, what I've heard from mm-hmm. plenty of different kinds of physical therapists, yep. you know, yoga people, um, counselors. So, so now you're starting to bring up that trauma and where we store our trauma. Kind of like you said, you had the ovarian cysts, mm-hmm. right? So, um, it maybe it's starting to kind of move that trauma upward and mm-hmm. out. Is that kind of how that works? Mm-hmm. And then. That's kind of scary because you're you yeah. buried these wounds. Yeah, like we do need a whole nother interview. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's there's lots of research out there. There's lots of medical research out there that um, you know we have our chakras, the seven energy centers along the spine. They work with the colors. They work with different parts of the body, uh, and that's what my bo- the bowls and the gong the bowls the gong all the bowls work with clearing blocks in the chakras. And so say you do have a block in your sacral chakra and that could cause doubt, like doubt, fear, mm-hmm. even, you know, moving up anger. And so say you you have that and you've buried that deep down, well that's might start to bubble up for during you. a sound Yeah. Hand. And so I've heard extreme laughter, like some people are just like in stitches laughing the whole time. And that might be that way of their way of getting it out. I have heard crying. I hear snoring the most. Mm -hmm. I mean, people usually fall asleep. And then that's the next thing I get, you know, is this still working for me if I'm dead asleep? Yeah, that's exactly what your body needs. But I think everybody needs to experience that. I mean, yes, I had that first few times where it was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know. Should I stay in this room? But I knew. And that's what I tell people when they come. Stay breathe you know Mm -hmm. it's nothing you're here you're safe you're loved you're protected you're in a room full of awesome people we're all here for healing so if those feelings come just breathe through them you know stay right where you're at because it's working on what needs to be worked on and i know that's difficult yeah i mean that's you know when i first started going to kundalini it was like Deal with yourself, deal oh with gosh. reality, deal with what's coming up. I'm mm-hmm. like, what are you talking about? I've been running for years. Yeah, like, I don't want to stay. Right? Like, right? what? I got to stay in this class. So, um, yeah, but once, if that happens, because it doesn't happen to everybody, but if, if that does happen, it's necessary. Mm-hmm. It's just like when, you know, I always say to my son, I'm like, cry, cry it out. Like, get out your emotions because, and that was when I, that was one of my first yoga classes. The instructor said, you have the right to feel the way you do. Yeah. And I sat in that class and sobbed my brains out because I was like, all these years, people have been telling me to get over myself, to get out. Why can't mm-hmm. you? You know, it's like you're sad. You'll be fine. Yeah. What? I, like all this stuff. Go get I'm a haircut. Like, yeah. <laughs> Go get a haircut. Go or, a you know, it's like if I could deal with I would. Yeah. So that's why I tell people like. In my classes, I'm like, if you need to cry, if you need to relax, if you need to sh- whatever. Yeah. Like we're here to experience our body, mind and spirit. And we're here to experience everything that we're supposed to experience. And you have people within this room. You have me. And it was because of my teachers. I want to be that same person for others yeah. where I want to help them in the middle of the night if they need it. I want to be the person to send them emails if they need yeah. extra advice. So if it comes up, it comes up. And, and then so, yeah. there's like um, a moment of clarity. So yeah. those fears, what I really like and about um, kind of this holistic journey of healing is that um, you're not so far on my journey that's been two years long um, I've had to face everything. Yeah. So and you should. Um, well, I, feel, well yeah. I find mm-hmm. that some people, you know, want us to to numb it or to mm-hmm. get, distract ourselves totally. or, um, you know, it's it's like, don't don't face your fears. Just mm-hmm. ignore your fears yeah. and go move on to this situation. And, you know, let's not talk about it and let's not put it out in the open. And so what I really like about the healing community that I found is that. Um, a lot of these practices, yoga, 
uh, sound healing, meditation, um, like even just like salt therapy, yeah. and mm-hmm. all of this kind of stuff. It really allows you to go inward mm-hmm. instead of looking for some kind of external mm-hmm. healing, like, you know, alcohol, med- yeah. drugs, medication, mm-hmm. whatever. You're actually going inside yourself, looking at the trauma that's being brought up processing it and then it takes you to this other place so mm-hmm. i want to talk about the other place so i remember your first and the other place is worth it yeah the mm-hmm. other getting it's almost like yeah. a bridge right you've got to go through that mud and that mm-hmm. sludge in your it's own the life lotus flower it is the, okay so we will talk about that because <laughs> i think the lotus flower is going to come up in a lot of these interviews so you have to get through the mud right to get to um bloom and express yourself and show your beauty. So when I, um, all those fears started coming up for me in that first session. Right. And then probably about, you know, 30 minutes in, I went to this place mm-hmm. and I want to talk about the place. Cause I, I really don't know what this place is yet. Um, but there was just clarity, mm-hmm. um, peacefulness, almost like, uh, immense love. Mm-hmm. And, almost like space. So when your eyes are closed, you don't really see much. Um, I kind of always, whenever I get into that meditative state, I see like these flecks of light. Mm-hmm. I don't know if a lot of other people see that or not. I've heard everything. From yes. Like okay. unicorns to fairies to leprechauns. To, so, yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, anyways, what is that place? And, and um, can you describe that place of peace? Hmm. Um, it's different for everyone. Um, but it is where <laughs> the best way I can describe it is you're physically there, but you're really not there. Like emotion like you're just you're kind of in this floaty fairyland of love. Is it consciousness? Yeah. I mean, you're conscious, you're there, you're physically, right. but a lot of people said like, whoa, I just saw colors and I was mm-hmm. here and I just, Where you know, is it's that? like all your fears start to, or anything, like whatever you're worried about, whatever you're experiencing, it just drops away. And you know, at that moment that you're safe and you're healing and you're loved and you're protected. And that's my, when I'm up there playing, I'm holding the space for everyone. So I really, I chant, I focus on them. I really focus on, I don't know what everybody's experiencing or going through, but I really want them to feel that where it's like, I don't have a care in the world. I don't, I'm not worried about this. Like I am totally fine and present right here in this moment. And so it is quite euphoric for a lot of people. And healing, I guess, to even allow yourself to take a mental break. Because mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of people with illnesses yeah. and anxiety and depression and just everybody in general, I think our minds are constantly running. And so when you can slow it down, mm-hmm. you're obviously slowing down your nervous system. You're obviously slowing down your parasympathetic yeah. nervous system. So um, it's kind of giving your body a break. Now, we don't have a lot of time, but I <laughs> I do want to talk about one story that I've heard about you Um you have actually gone and played these instruments on somebody that's ailing. Is that correct? Yes. Like a lot of a lot of the sound healers do. Yeah. So let's talk about that really quick. So people that are ailing, sick, cancer, um, just major pain. What, what what does that look like? And and what do you do? What oh when I play on well, uh, I do a lot of private sound healings. Actually, go into people's houses. Um, it just depends on the person and what they're experiencing. Some people like to actually have the Tibetan bowls on their body. So they can feel the so vibrations. So they can feel the vibrations. Um, like some people really want their head right next to the gong. So they're, <laughs> they're feeling it. It's more, you know, I set up my instruments depending on what they're experiencing and what part of the body they're having the illness with. Mm-hmm. And I really set it up based on what they're going through and or what, what do- they're, you know... What do they report after those sessions? Oh no! Well, I keep coming back, so they must. <laughs> <laughs> so it works. Yeah, they like. I have something. one woman who uh, is is experiencing menopause and she can't sleep, and so I go in and I play the gong and she falls dead asleep and I leave her house. Like she doesn't even hear me leave. That's I just it. want her <clears throat> to be able to have that space of sleeping. So I do actually play in her bedroom, and sh- I hear her snore and she's out. I do my two hours and I sneak out of her house and then she's able to 
So that's a good example of, you know, and I've also helped couples conceive. Not, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, not while I'm there, but, but fertility. Um, fertility. Fertility. fertility <laughs> and, you know, I leave. Whatever they do is what they do. And we, we said amazing. we would come to laughter, didn't we? Um, and then, but now two sets of twins. So, wow. you know, it's kind of, but also, um, you know, that's whoever awesome. I work with has to have that open mindset too. I mean, right. if they're, that's the power of positive thinking. If they're going, oh no, this is not going to work. Right. This is You so have to stupid. be open, right? Then, Just yeah. the, you have to, oh, mm-hmm. because I mean, those things are going to come up. You have, I, I was a skeptic on all of this before I started. Oh, yeah. I was queen skeptic. I had ways of coping. I had coping skills before I had my baby, and then my mm-hmm. coping skills totally changed after uh, on this holistic journey. And so, um, the only thing, yeah, the advice I would give anybody that wants to go down this road of natural healing would be to uh, keep an open mind. But um, we're going to wrap up. I want to ask. So, if people are listening, you know who can benefit. I know everybody can benefit, mm-hmm. right? But let's talk about like specifics, like. Who really like could use a sound healing? Not besides everybody. Yeah. Um, totally stressed out. And I'm an I mean, that was me. I was like completely anxious. I couldn't there were some days like I felt like I couldn't function. I was not in my body. I was not like I was elsewhere. I mean, there were some yoga classes where I'm like, yeah, I did all the motion, but did I listen to the teacher whatsoever? So I think it's more that like if you have obsessive thoughts, if you have high anxiety, if you, you know, if you're unable to sit still, those are the people. I mean, don't we hear the quote like if you don't have 20 minutes to meditate, then take an hour. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's those sort of people who have such or that they say, oh, I don't have time to come to class or I don't have time for a sound healing. So I'm the like, people that yeah, don't no, have so time. So you're going to come tonight. Yeah. Are the people that need it the most. Correct. That's quite interesting. Or then, you know, people who say uh, they might be experiencing an illness and they're like, I don't know what else to do. Mm-hmm. You know, my doctors have not given me I don't have any other options Then yes, come to things like this. Yes. Go to salt caves, go to yoga, come to sound healings, you know, because the benefits, there's so much research on the Internet. I mean, I said I was researching it earlier and it's like it just blows up on Google with the benefits of sound healing, the benefits of yoga, you know, so really everybody. But I would say mostly people who are on the high anxiety, like panic obsessive thinking worry you know can't sit still kind of people yeah which i was included in that a while ago yes and we have a retreat coming up that you and i are doing together which i'm really excited about so i'll be cooking and you'll be teaching and um i'm just so i'm so excited about our connection i think me too um that was just kind of a serendipity for me to walk into that room and you are now my second guest And I'm really focused on these people that have completely changed the course of my life. Mm So I want to thank you. Um, You're welcome. We hardly even touched on the the huge wingspan (laughs) of what you really do. And Mm -hmm. I know that there are probably a lot of people listening that know it. And you have touched so many lives. And none of us can thank you enough. But... um, I know I know without you I don't think I would be um sitting here interviewing you today. So um what you do works. Mm-hmm. Thank so, you. Thank so that's you. the guarantee that we're here right now. Mm-hmm. So um anyways But it's I, because of what I've experienced too and I yeah. think we that's what I tell my students, you never know what somebody's going through. Mm-mm. And so just go out into this world with kindness and love and all we can do is serve and help and be there for each other. So as so as we keep that up. If new people are listening, where can they find you? Like if they want to go take one of your classes. I mean, you're everywhere. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't have a website. It's too funny that I used to be in TV and I'm not technically advanced at the moment. Um, but I do have a Facebook page, Light of the World Yoga. Um, and you'll see I live in Elburn. It's quite a fun, bright page. Um and then I do teach uh, 21 classes a week at seven different <laughs> studios. But so you're mostly, everywhere. Yeah. And then I do workshops uh, at different places. But my whole schedule, everything is on that Light of the World yoga. And anybody can friend me. My phone number is out there. You know, it's uh, but mostly I teach uh, my th- major studios, Norris Recreation Center in uh, St. Charles, the Del Nor Health and Wellness Center, Prana Yoga Center and Abhyasa. 
uh, in Naperville, uh, and also Yoga by Degrees, which is in Wheaton. So. so if they're interested, they can go on to those Light websites, of the World Yoga, yeah. and then they can go to Light of the World Yoga Facebook, which is you, and they can see your schedule there and say, right hey, I want to do a sound healing, mm-hmm. or I want to try yoga, or I just want to meet this character. Who is she? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but wanna- my, yeah, Monday, if, a lot of people ask me, when do you do weekly sound healings? And that's always at Del Nora on Monday nights at 8.30. Okay. And guests can walk, guests can come in. They can. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want to thank you so much. We we're gonna have to have you back. Thank you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> You're coming back. We got to talk about uh, Kundalini Yoga. That'll be next. So, anyways, thank you again. Thank and you guys. Um, what? How do you how do you say uh, Satnam? Right. Satnam. And and what does that Namaste. mean? Namaste. Satnam means that I will always live my truth. Truth is my identity. Yep. And I would yeah. say that's how you living live. your authenticity. So thank thanks, you. Jenny. You're welcome. I was so happy to have her on the show. I think that we have to definitely have her back because we didn't even go over the whole spectrum of what she has to offer as far as healing is concerned. But um, she's a great person. Absolutely. hundred percent. I'm glad people got to meet her on the show. Yeah. Well, we're already looking forward to her uh, coming back and yes. chatting some more. And um, so what do you think? Okay. So January, any thoughts for our... Uh, folks listening, any tips for them to get through? I need help is basically what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not a winter guy. So <laughs> tell me what I should do in order to enjoy the rest of January. Go to one of Jenny's classes. Yeah, maybe a sound healing class. Go right? to a sound healing class. Go to a yoga class. I mean. I'm kind of afraid of the the demons that that's going <laughs> to conjure up, though. <laughs> You've got to face your fears. I no. think this is the only. The, the, no. No. <laughs> Then you're going to be bored and sad in the rest of January. I'm sorry. What about Netflix? <laughs> Netflix. Netflix. Will Netflix help you is helping to me not face your fears. Yep. Yes. Netflix. So whiskey. Could, yeah. You're fine, Jaime. Then. You're absolutely fine. In That's your really what I wanted to hear. Safe little bubble. <laughs> Eventually, you're going to have to deal with it. All right. It might not be this nope. February, but not now. Even- all right. Well, thank you once again to um, Ryan Carney for, for the music yeah. and Chuck Benorth for taking photos. You can find uh, those photos at the website, foxvalleyvoice.com. Uh, find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Yep. And uh, we'll have links to uh, all that fun stuff on, uh, on the website. Yes. And thanks to Jenny. And mm-hmm. um, thanks to you, Jaime, always for yeah. all the hard work that you do. Thanks to in you. In between watching Netflix. And yeah. <laughs> so. I also listen to a lot of podcasts. Too. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like this one. <laughs> like this one. This mm. one's a good one. So. All right. Thank you for listening. Yep. Tell your friends. Please. We'll uh, talk to you soon. Okay. Check, baby, check, baby, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> All I want to do is... Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>